Hello everybody and welcome to another video from our studio. Today we're going to be talking about the Uniplex Lavelier microphone, which is what we are using in the studio today. We're really lucky, we've got Mike from product management and Ben from our market development team who are going to take us through things in a bit more detail. Uh, but to start off, I'll just give you a really quick idea of what this product is. So it's the latest microphone in the Plex line, which has the Plex cable, which is very, very durable and has a lot of features that um, Mike and Ben will take us through a bit later. But this is a directional Lavelier microphone. It's one millimeter and uh, it's fantastic if you are doing anything in a room with extra sound reinforcement. So we'll go through a bit more detail with this from Mike in just a moment. Ben's they're going to take us through a in detail comparison of the whole Plex range and then we've actually pre-recorded some content to show a sonic comparison of all three microphones together. So let's kick straight into this. We're going to go to Mike. Hello Mike. Hi Jack. How are you? Very good. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm um, doing great. Very excited. Wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about the Uniplex microphone then. Let's, uh, if you could take us through this product in a bit more detail. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Jack. Um, Uniplex UL4 microphone is our newest offering from Sure. It is a, a five millimeter microphone, directional uh, lavalier, and it's made for speech applications. So today I'm going to detail uh, what the offerings are, um, some of the differences between uh, Uniplex, Duraplex, and Twinplex, all of our Plex series lines and uh, just go over everything uh, basic, uh, all over the basics of the UL4 and uh, what it can offer. So let's get into it. So if I were to choose three reasons to pick the UL4, it's very simple. Um, it is a five millimeter sub-miniature lavalier. Um, that means it's very non-intrusive. That means it's a very small microphone. It's made to be uh, used on any sort of uh, talent that uh, is doing any sort of speaking and any, any nature of that. It has a cardioid response, which has excellent off-axis rejection for speech applications that have uh, sound reinforcement, no audience noise, stage noise. Um, it's directional for a reason, and I'll get into some of those details later. Uh, the second reason would be the Sureplex cable. Um, if some of you may be familiar with Twinplex and Duraplex, uh, the Sureplex cable is a 1.6 millimeter cable. It's very, uh, it's very reliable and durable as a dual redundant ground. And that dual redundant ground is basically two helix ground cables that uh, make the microphone, uh, that make the cable extremely durable. There's no memory effect. It's ultra thin, it's paintable, and uh, it's one of the best in class uh, cables around. And we include that on this microphone as well as the Twinplex and Duraplex microphone. Uh, the third reason would be uh, the tailored response for speech applications. Uh, we wanted to make a microphone that was extremely clear, extremely clean, uh, had a little bit more of a brightness to it, um, basically for any audio capture for presentations, conferencing, uh, and broadcasting. So those would be uh, basically the top three reasons for the UL4. I do have more details, so let's get to those. When you're looking at the UL4 and our product, Product offerings. We do offer nine separate SKUs for this microphone. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why. First off, uh, we look at terminations. Uh, we have the TA4F termination and the Limo termination. And of those two, oh, and I'm sorry, the XLR termination as well. Um, of those three, the uh, basically the microphone is broken out by color and termination. So if you look at the SKU models, um, the UL4, that stands for the SKU. B stands for the color, so B, C, and W, that stands for uh, black, cocoa, tan, and white. MTQG stands for uh, TA4F termination. LM3 stands for LIMO termination. XLR stands for uh, the XLR preamp that uh, I'll get to in a second. And then uh, dash A stands for accessories. So uh, when you're looking at these SKUs, you have to basically choose color, termination, um, and that's it. So Really, uh, when you get down to it, the TQG um, is basically TA4F, Limo is uh, Limo 3. You can do that in black, tan, cocoa, or white. And then the XLR, um, that is a black microphone. Um, that microphone is uh, the only variant of the XLR. Apologies. Uh, the UL4B slash the dash XLR um, is a black variant that is TA4F terminated and it connects to an XLR preamp. So that SKU comes 
uh, with an RPM 400 uh, TQG preamp for any sort of wired uh, applications that you may need to use a microphone. Now let's get into some of the accessories. Um, the accessories for the UL4 are very basic. They're very strategic. Um, basically, because this will be deployed in mostly speech applications with reinforcement, uh, we included the lavalier pouch for any sort of storage. We include a single tie clip. Uh, that tie clip comes in four separate colors to match the cable and the microphone. Um, with that tie clip, it's also compatible with Twinplex and Duraplex uh, 1.6 millimeter cables. So it's also interchangeable with the other lines. Uh, one of the things that's really phenomenal about this tie clip is that it's rotatable by uh, 360 degrees and it has a C-shaped mount. So basically, if you need to uh, adjust or angle the microphone in a specific way, you can do that with full variability. Uh, the windscreen is the RPM UL4 uh, SFWS B, C, T, and W. Those windscreens are snap fit windscreens. Um, so basically there is a ledge on the microphone. And if you need to use a snap fit windscreen, it connects to the microphone and it stays on. So you don't have to worry about it rubbing off or uh, basically falling off the microphone. So it's there for security. And finally, for the XLR SKU only, we have the RPM 400 TQG. Um, that Preamp is basically a Unity game preamp. It comes with a belt clip. It's for any wired application. So you get the UL4 terminated to a TA4, and you go, well, I don't want to use this in a wireless application. I want to use this in a wired application. You basically take out the preamp, and you connect it to the preamp, and there you go. You have your XLR termination. And if you look at the right of the slide, that's everything packed into the uh, case. That's basically how you're going to see it once it arrives, uh, basically once you open it up and, and, and start using the product. So with the microphone itself, uh, it is a directional lavalier. When you look at the other Plex um, portfolios, um, those are omnidirectional. So I wanted to do just a basic understanding and a basic explanation um, of a cardioid and omnidirectional pattern. With cardioid lavaliers, uh, you're going to be deploying them in environments that may have other noise, such as stage noise, audience noise, just a, an environment where you wouldn't want to use an omnidirectional microphone that picks up from anywhere. So the cardioid pattern has uh, basically a really wonderful off-axis rejection with the UL4. It's focused and concise, so you're focusing on the speaker and you're not getting any ambience, you're not getting any environmental sound. Um, now, if you wanted that, you would want to go with either uh, a duraplex or a twinplex, and that would be an omnidirectional polar pattern. Uh, that polar pattern basically picks up from everywhere around the microphone. So if you're using this in a situation for you know film or location, and you want to get sort of uh, the environmental sound, an omnidirectional microphone is what you would want to go with. Uh, if you're looking for more directional speech-based response, um, the UL4 has that cardioid pattern, and it's tailored for those use cases where you don't have people moving around a lot. You're not looking at the environment too much. You want to be able to just capture someone's voice, and that's where a cardioid pattern comes in really, uh, really. Uh, that's where the cardioid pattern comes in, and it works really well with uh, lavalier and speech applications specifically. So... Next up, I wanted to get into some sort of uh, specifications and differentiation between our Uniplex microphones, Duraplex microphones, and Twinplex. Um, so basically, all of these microphones uh, within our Plex lines are uh, five millimeter condenser microphones. Twinplex is a dual cartridge pre-polarized condenser. Uniplex and Duraplex are single condenser microphones. Um, the reason why that is, is Twinplex using that dual element um, provides a, a wider dynamic range and a very high max SPL and very low noise floor. That micro and that microphone series is made for high tier premium applications where you would need an omnidirectional microphone. For Uniplex and Duraplex, you're going to see the specs. Uh, basically, uh, uh, they're not going to be as expansive as something as Twinplex, but they are very focused. They are very direct specifications. And Duraplex and Twinplex actually match really well. Aside from uh, uh, dynamic range and self noise, um, most of these uh, specs match up between Uniplex and Duraplex. Uh, Duraplex also has an IP57 rating. Twinplex has hydrophobic coding on the frequency response caps. Uh, Duraplex is made to 
go into these extreme environments with water and dust. That IP57 rating basically states that it can be used for, um, uh, it, it can be submerged in water for up to 30 minutes and it can still perform um, after that submersion. And also it is uh, dust resistant, meaning that um, there's gonna be minimal, minimal dust intrusion down to the microns into that microphone. Duraplex is made for its durability. Twinplex is made for its premium audio quality. Uniplex was made for its directionality. Um, so it's not going to have an IP57 rating. We don't want to deploy that uh, in the ocean or someplace very dusty, um, such as the desert or something like that. Um, the cable between all of them, uh, they all have 1.6 millimeter cables. Twinplex does offer a TL45, which is uh, a 1.1 meter millimeter cable, which is uh, a smaller diameter, but the rest of them are all 1.6 millimeter cables. And like I said, that tie clip earlier is compatible with the 1.6 millimeter cable across all lines. Um, the self noise and sensitivity, very similar between Duraplex. You're obviously going to have a lower self noise with Twinplex due to that dual element. Uh, color offerings, you're going to have black, tan, cocoa, and white with Uniplex. Same with Duraplex and Twinplex. And we also have headset air variants for Duraplex and Twinplex. Uh, and those are only going to come in black, tan, and cocoa. When you're looking at terminations, TA4F, Limo, and XLR for Uniplex, TA4F and Limo for Duraplex, and then Twinplex, the whole lot. You get TA4F, Limo, Microdot, XLR, NC, a whole bunch of things. And then with retermination, we suggest uh, with Uniplex and Duraplex to be, I'm sorry, with Uniplex to be TA4F and Limo only, and then with Duraplex to be TA4, TA5F, and Limo only. Uh, Twinplex can be reterminated to a multitude of uh, uh, different types of uh, wiring terminations. So uh, if you're looking for that variability with your termination, um, that is definitely the line uh, that you would want to consider uh, in a use case. So let's get to the next slide. So between these three lines and all of these specifications, we also have a lot of different offerings and variability between every single line. So I wanted to kind of break this down by an application-based uh, perspective. So Twinplex is a very versatile microphone. It's made for both speech and performance. We have the 45, the 46, the 47, the 48, and then the TH53 headset. So we have a headset variant of this microphone as well. Um, when it comes to uh, it, it's it's uh, when it comes to when it comes to its uh, its positives, the it has exceptional audio quality, a dual cartridge, and it's omnidirectional, as stated. Um, it has a wide dynamic range and natural response. So, if you're using this in big rooms, you're deploying a lot of these microphones, um, and you need the utmost premium quality uh, at, when it comes to any sort of uh, vocal reproduction. Um, Twinplex is definitely there for that. Uh, and it's also, because of its dynamic range, it can be used for different instrument miking applications. And it also has a flexible colored headset frame, uh, variable terminations, variable responses with uh, our speech caps. So we have a flat and tailored response speech cap for different frequency responses and a huge assortment of mounting and, uh, of mounting and accessory options for uh, uh, different industries such as theater, uh, broadcast, location sound. Um, we have different concealment accessories for location sound, and we have the TL48 variant that is made to go underneath clothing. Um, and then you can also use this microphone in uh, speech applications like corporate presentation and house of worship. Um, but you also have to uh, uh, be aware and be knowledgeable about um, any sort of reinforcement, any sort of external noise. It is an omnidirectional microphone. Uh, Twinplex does have uh, a pretty good off-axis rejection for uh, omnidirectional, but it is still omnidirectional. So you want to be aware of that. Uh, when it comes to Duraplex, you would want to choose this microphone based on its very neutral uh, response. It's very focused set of accessories. Um, and it's also made for speech and performance applications. So we have the DL4 lavalier, and we also have the DH5 headset. And a really wonderful thing between these two is that um, the DH5 headset frame and the TH53 headset frame work with both Twinplex and Duraplex Boom. So there's interchangeability between those two as well. Um, when it comes to Duraplex, it's very much a location sound friendly microphone. It's multi-environmental. That IP57 rating is absolutely wonderful. It makes it rugged. It makes it durable. And um, it's made to be deployed in a, a bunch of different environments. And it's made to be 
uh, just a wonderful general performing sounding micro uh, general performance microphone uh, <laughs> when it comes to its response. Finally, with the UL4, it is a speech applications mic only. We we're looking at corporate presentation. You're looking at broadcast. You're looking at house of worship. Looking at any environment where you have sound reinforcement or additional noise, and you need a very focused ranged response on someone's voice. Uh, it has a clean and clear directional response, has a cardioid pattern, and then um, it comes with a very limited set of accessories that we obviously uh, reviewed a little bit earlier, a case, a tie clip, windscreen, and it also has that XLR variant as well. And that's kind of the basic overview on uh, uh, UL4 and Uniplex uh, with consideration of Duraplex and Twinplex. I'm going to hand it over uh, to Ben Escobedo to uh, basically do the Uniplex, Duraplex, and uh, Twinplex comparisons. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Um, it's exciting. This is the uh, third edition to our Plex line. And uh, the Plex kind of moniker there is basically referring to the cable, as Mike mentioned. Uh, and the cable itself is, is nothing short of amazing. You know, it's very durable. It's very soft. Um, it doesn't have a memory effect, like when you wind it up, it doesn't set, um, and it's uh, it's really a, a feat of engineering. We'll go more into that uh, with, a, with a Twinplex uh, discussion here, but in this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the different variants of, of, twi of Duraplex which, and Twinplex, which were the kind of the, the legacy uh, partners in this line here. Uh, Duraplex, as his name you know, says, it's durable. Um, it's made to be extremely rugged. Uh, you're thinking outdoor applications, location sound shoots, uh, being in the, the sand dunes or uh, getting splashed on with water and that sort of thing. Uh, that's where the Duraplex really shines. Um, and it is available in those same four colors at the Twinplex, uh, black, tan, white, and cocoa. And um, it uh, also has a headset version as well. Uh, so these guys are five millimeter uh, microphones and uh, they are very, very good IP rating, which we'll discuss in, in the next slide, please. So the, uh, the five millimeter omnidirectional sub miniature design uh, has really good game before feedback. Um, it is a uh, kind of an omnidirectional capsule, but don't let that fool you. You still get great game before feedback uh, compared to some other models out there. Uh, it's tried to be tailored to be a neutral and very flat type of sounding microphone. Uh, but if you need that extra boost, there, there's offering a presence cap, which if you put the cap on, it can boost up the, the treble content and give you more cut through for uh, vocals and, and speech applications. And then um, kind of one thing that comes to mind with the, the latest, greatest digital wireless, like our Axiom Digital and other portions in our line is RF immunity um, and having immunity from those uh, AM components, especially in the, uh, the uh, digital wireless line. And these lavaliers are all buttoned up and sealed to be immune from that. Uh, where in the past uh, it depended on the lavalier uh, entirely if that was going to be a problem to get. You'd hear mainly static and things coming through as part of the, uh, you know, the digital transmission. So uh, the IP rating itself, uh, IP57, um, we've gone to great lengths to test this. Uh, we've got some really cool stuff in the lab back in, uh, in Chicago uh, that can uh, try to break these things and uh, we've got different machines that will flex the cable they're called a flex bot and we've got a sweat bot which drips artificial sweat on on these things and puts sound through them and we go through great lengths to try to break them as uh, you would out in the in the real world so um, the ip rating here uh, basically is talking about its dust and waterproof rating um, and an ip57 rating is, is really good and uh, and it can be uh, considered you know basically you know almost almost dust proof and almost waterproof uh, uh, to an extent, so it can go uh, get submerged for a little while. It can get splashed on. It can be, uh, you know, dust and uh, all those particles. And if you're looking for something really durable, uh, not only is the capsule itself super durable, but the uh, the cable, the Plex cable, is part of this entire story here, and that is very durable. You know, as soft as it is, and and nice to touch and paintable and all that, uh, the Plex cable is just bar none the best lavalier cable I've, uh, I've ever seen. So uh, with that being said, let's go to what started it all, the, uh, the Twinplex on the next slide here. Um, the Twinplex is kind of the first, uh, and it's our current uh, top of the line lavalier, omnidirectional, um, with the name Twin in it. Um, Mike talked a little bit about it in the previous section about its twin capsule approach. So um, what we're looking at here in this tiny little package or, or wafer, uh, we use some state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facilities to make this all happen. But unlike any lavalier on the market, it has a dual diaphragm design packed inside that five millimeter capsule. 
Um, the way I like to explain it is that it's kind of two opposing capsules as you would uh, see in like a figure eight microphone. However, the pattern is omnidirectional and it picks up very evenly uh, in a 360 degree pattern. So if you're on or off axis, that works really well. Um, and you know, regardless uh, that it is omni, it still has a very, like we mentioned, great gain before feedback. Uh, we've had some, you know, really, uh, you know, top level A users on Broadway and whatnot using this lavalier uh, in, with a live PA system in house, and they had feedback concerns. But once they tried it, uh, even though it was Omni, they got great gain before feedback and are currently using it in their show. So uh, we're really uh, pleased to see them being happy with it. But um, it does also allow us to do some special, I'd say tricks or, uh, you know, techniques that we can do to, uh, you know, maintain better sound quality, more consistent off-axis response, um, you know, lower handling noise, and uh, again, it's all buttoned up for RF resistance. Um, one thing about this cable, if you compare it to any other lavalier that you may be used to, and you're looking for that handling noise, you run your hands along the cable while it's plugged in and listening to it on headphones, uh, you'll notice that the cable is ultra quiet. So, like, moving around, uh, you know, with the clothing noise or, you know, however you're attaching it to the talent or, or the subject, it's it's amazing. And it's, it's really, really quiet, and, and people are just blown away continually with, uh, with how that all works. Uh, works and it's all part of the Plex cable. So again, Uniplex, Duraplex, Twinplex, all of the Plex series share that technology in this awesome cable. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, speaking of the cable, you know, Mike mentioned, uh, you know, it's a double helix winding and all that. Um, basically, we've been working on it for the better part of a decade and it's nothing short of amazing. Uh, like I mentioned previously, we do have a, a flex bot or a uh, we have all the spots at, at the office, and they basically hang a weight off the cable and try to break it. And they, they put audio through it, and they go back and forth and back and forth with a, a rotating kind of a stepper motor or whatnot, and it tries to break the cable, and we count how many times until that happens. And uh, a lot of the other, you know, Brand X or other lavaliers out of the market um, can go just a, a short amount of time before they break. Um, with Twinplex, we've gotten, you know, well over, uh, you know, many thousands, hundred thousand or more cycles before we have an issue with it. And part of it is that redundant helix grinding, uh, grounding inside. So um, basically, you'd have to break all of those conductors in the same exact spot in order to have a problem. So uh, that's very unlikely when you have all these redundant grounds and everything is kind of helix wrapped internally. Um, but we really been working on this for quite a long time and we've been testing it and continually testing it to make sure that this, this cable is nothing short of amazing. Um, and uh, we're just pleased to offer it in all three of the variants that we, that we mentioned. Uh, Mike did mention, and it's worth mentioning again, that the Twinplex is the only one in the series that does offer an ultra-thin version of the cable, uh, which is 1.1 millimeter versus the standard 1.6. It's a small difference, but it could um, help you if you're really trying to hide a microphone, uh, you're doing location sound, or you need a plant mic, or that cable has to be almost invisible, maybe you're running it into a costume or, or some advanced techniques. Um, and that is available in the TL45 variant, uh, which we'll talk about in, in one minute. Uh, next slide, please. So speaking of the variants, um, four different variants and a headset with the Twinplex line. So um, there's the 45, 46, 47, and 48, and then there's a the TH53 headset. So we just talked about the TL45. That is the one that has the small cable and the low sensitivity capsule. Uh, the 46 is uh, got a little high sensitivity capsule and uh, the same kind of variants with a thicker cable. The 47 is a very popular model because it has the, uh, the, the regular cable with the lower sensitivity. Uh, the 48 is the speech optimized one. It has a nice long presence cap on it. And if uh, you're used to those microphones that have that extra presence boost or for you know, vocal or speech applications, uh, the 48 is, is really a fan favorite there because it allows a little gentle bump or presence boost uh, to let that vocals cut through. And then the TH53, of course, is the headset. Um, all of the variants are available in the colors uh, with the exception of the 48 and the 53, um, which are only available in three. Uh, black, white, tan, and cocoa for the most part. Uh, they're all paintable. Even as supple and soft as a cable is, you can paint it with uh, your favorite kind of theater or stage paints, which is which is amazing. Um, and then <clears throat> it depends on what you're used to as far as output, you know, uh, volume levels and what kind of signal that you're expecting and what kind of reach that you want of which variant you may get. Um, they're all great in their own respect, um, and that's why we have four different variants and, uh, you know, different colors and uh, we also have different connectors and XLR variants and uh, Unterminated and Limo 3 and TQG, TA4F and 
and others as well. So uh, there's a, a plethora of options out there with the TwinFlex line, and it is considered you know our current top of the line uh, level there for professional uses, and we see it proven every day. But that um, that's basically the comparison between the three different lines, especially the Legacy Duraplex and the TwinFlex line. And if you take anything away, make, you know you understand that they do share the same awesome cable, even though they have a little bit different capsules on on the front end. Mike, Ben, thank you so much for those overviews. Really, really interesting and great to get uh, under the hood of some of those. So we've taken that information and we actually pre-recorded a sonic comparison of all three of those microphones that should make some of that information live and breathe a little bit. So as that's pre-recorded, we're going to cut to it. And that cut is going to come now. Okay, let's dive into a comparison of the three microphones in the Plex range. We're gonna go through each microphone and have a little listen and do some experiments in the room to just show off the various things that make them excellent at their specific applications. And we're gonna start off with the Uniplex microphone. So this is a directional Lavalier microphone and directional labs are really, really useful when you're in a room that has a speaker in it. So if you're looking to amplify vocals in a room for public speaking or lecture theatres or something of that nature, a directional lav like Uniplex is really, really useful. Why is that? Well, omnidirectional lavaliers, as the name suggests, pick up absolutely everything in the room. So I'm using an omnidirectional lav now. There's a lot of kind of room noise and we can see in the EQ behind me that there's a lot of information in that kind of low mid area as well that we would need to EQ out in the console. Directional labs, as the name suggests, much more directional. So we're tightening up that low end by nature of what the capsule is doing, but also we're just getting audio from the bit that we're pointing it at. So what does that sound like in practice? Well, we can do that in the room here. I've got a powered speaker. And what I'm gonna do is in the console here, I'm just gonna start introducing the noise from an omnidirectional lav and the uniplex lavalier. Uh, into the space and we'll see how much gain we can put into the room. So let's start with just a generic Omni Lav. That's what we're seeing on the screen behind us. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start increasing the gain here. One, two, one, two, check, check. Hey, hey, one, two. Okay, so we're already getting quite a bit of feedback there, just underneath minus 10. So I would say that that's probably unusable at that point really. So not a huge amount of gain in the room, not a huge amount of volume. We'd have to do quite a lot of work in the desk to try and get this better. Let's do the same thing, but now we'll use the Uniplex directional lav. So there you go, you're now listening to the Uniplex and I'm gonna do the same thing. One, two, one, two, check, check. Okay, so this is already at the level that the omnidirectional lav was at and we haven't got any feedback so far. So I'll keep going. One, two, hey, hey, check, check, one, two. All right, we're now at about minus six. We're double the volume we were at before and we're just getting a little bit of super high frequency feedback in the top end. I'll keep going until it just gets unusable. One, two, check, 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 and there we go. That's it. So about minus five, we got feedback that was too much, but that's more than double what we were able to get out of the omnidirectional lav. So without any EQ in the desk whatsoever, just the sound out of the back of the microphone is way more usable when you've got a speaker in the room like this. And if we look at the EQ curve, we can kind of see what's happening. So the low end is much, much tighter. There's lots, there's, there's less information down in that kind of 60 to 250 zone. But interestingly, we get a lot of information at that two to eight K, that key two to eight K frequency area, which is very important for speech intelligibility, which means that if I'm speaking, you understand the words that I'm saying. So there we go, that's Uniplex, perfect for any kind of public speaking with an amplified system in a room. Let's move on to the second mic in the range, which is Duraplex. Now, Duraplex, again, as the name suggests, has been designed to be a very durable capsule. And we thought long and hard about how to demonstrate that in the room here. And what we've decided to do is submerge a Duraplex in a glass of water. So that's been sitting there quite happily for the last 15 minutes before we started recording and throughout the video as well. And what we're gonna do is unmute it in the console and then I'll continue speaking. So you'll hear what the mic sounds like when it's underwater. We'll then take it out, clear out the water, and then we'll hear the true frequency response of the microphone, if it survives. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna unmute that now. And we are now listening to me from the glass of water. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. 
one, two, one, two. So it's probably sounding quite muffled right now because the water is blocking a lot of the important information. Let's go ahead and clear that water out. One, two, one, two, check, check. Okay, so that should now be coming through. And the first thing that you'll notice about the sound quality of this microphone is there's a lot more top end response, a lot more natural top end detail compared to the two microphones we've listened to so far. Now this is part of why Duraplex is really good as a field broadcast microphone. If you're burying this microphone underneath costume, that top end information is really important because it's gonna get attenuated by clothing and having it there means that we get a much more natural speech sound through costume without having to do a huge amount in post-production or editing. So this microphone has already been used an awful lot on, you know, kind of various hard hitting shows, shows where, you know, contestants are falling into quite deep water or they're in the desert or things of that nature. And it always performs super well. We don't have any problems with it whatsoever. So the durability of this microphone is absolutely key. And the sound signature has been put together again with that tight low end and the, the information in the 2 to 8K zone to give us that top end response and top end detail that's really important for speech intelligibility right out the back of the microphone. Okay, let's Duraplex. Let's go on to the top microphone in the range, which is the Twinplex microphone. So this is a very high fidelity capsule and it is the top of the range. So it is for those really high end um, use cases where you are gonna do a fair bit of work in the box. So we'll unmute that in the desk. There we go, one, two, one, two. You're now listening to Twinplex. And the first thing that you'll notice is that all that top end that was in the Duraplex has now been attenuated. And we've got an awful lot more information in that kind of 120 to 500 hertz zone. Now this is really important. It probably doesn't sound great on your end right now, but this is an excellent raw base to start with if you're then gonna be engineering that microphone. So if you're gonna take this into a theater show or on a tour or something of that nature, it's a really nice base to start sculpting your soundscape with. So I'm gonna try and show that a little bit now with the desk. All I'm gonna do is put a high pass filter in. So we'll put the high pass filter in at 100 Hertz, which is gonna get rid of some of that ultra low end and we can see that's disappeared straight away. So that's already gonna kind of brighten up the tone. The second thing that we'll do is just pull a little low mid scoop in at around about the kind of 200 to 250 hertz zone. So we'll chuck it in at 242 hertz for the time being. Um, we'll just tighten that up a bit. One, two, one, two. I'm gonna bring that down by three dB. Let's see what that's done to the EQ. There we go. So we've got that really super tight bottom end. The, uh, the low mids have been tidied up and you should hear a perceived increase in that, you know, again, that really important two to eight K zone, but it's very kind of musical and usable and mixable. So if you have got a hundred of these on a stage and you need to make them work together, Twinplex gives you the best base to start off with if you're gonna engineer it into a mix for a show or a broadcast or something of that nature. So there we go, that's the range from bottom to top. All of these microphones come in black, white, cocoa, and tan. As you go up the range, more accessories become available as well. So with Uniplex, we offer a couple of tie clips. Uh, Duraplex and Twinplex have a lot more accessory options. And if you wanna see details of those, do go onto the website and check them out. But that's it, the sonic comparison from bottom to top of Uniplex, Duraplex, and Twinplex. Um, there we go, that was a sonic comparison. Really interesting results there, especially based on what we've just heard. So Ben, I just wanna come back to you very quickly. If we want to get more information about any of these products, where can we go? Thanks, Jack. Uh, yeah, we have lots of resources out there. Uh, I'd say the first and foremost is reach out to our uh, outstanding dealer and rep network uh, for any hands-on demos or uh, questions that may be answered. Uh, we do also have a, a plethora of information available on sure.com. And also our uh, branch of Sure.com, the Sure Audio Institute, uh, where there's a lots of training modules and things, not just about the Plex series of lavaliers, but our products in general. So any education that you may look at, uh, check out Sure.com and especially the Sure Audio Institute. Fantastic. Thanks, Ben. Well, that's about all that we've got for today. So I just want to say thank you to Mike and Ben for joining us from America. Uh, great to have you on. And uh, we'll see you on another one of these videos very, very soon. Bye-bye. All right, so now, uh, before we dive in, I just wanted to add a quick little anecdote. Um, I have actually a little bit of personal experience on the front end of these lavalier microphones because 
uh, one of the many things that they didn't discuss that we did in testing was we tried to blow them up with the human voice as many times as possible. Um, so I had a lot of fun getting called down to our studio at headquarters and having a bunch of random lavaliers put right up against my face and told to sing as loud as I can. And I blew a couple up, but trust me, those didn't make it through. So. <laughs> Yeah, we always try to, you know, make it break it so that it's more reliable and such. And uh, I think uh, maybe Mike can speak a little bit about part of the uh, the quality process uh, and, and cartridge testing of the lavaliers uh, to part of that process. Mike, you care to share a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mean, it goes through when it comes to any of our products, they go through rigorous testing. Um, the cable machines actually have obviously the pull test. But when it actually comes to the microphones themselves, we put them through things like salt fog. Uh, moisture resistance testing, they go through drop testing, they go through um, anything that we can think of at this point uh, when it comes to our legacy and when it comes to our durability. Um, it, it's done rigorously uh, in our headquarters at Niles. Um, and um, it's just a really wonderful thing to see because it, you know, we want to make sure we put out the, the most reliable and durable products um, in any uh, of our categories and any of our offerings. And that's where it starts. It really comes down to our quality testing with that. And there is a Cheryl test, which is kind of fun. Oh, most certainly there is. <laughs> That's the best part. All right. Let's dive into these questions here. All right. First question, um, and I think this came up during Mike's um, opening spiel in the video. Um, can you talk a little bit about what pre-polarized means? That's actually a really good question. Um, pre-polarized is just the terminology when it comes to the condenser type. Um, I can't really speak too much to the actual process of pre-polarization, uh, but it means that it's basically a tuned cartridge whenever it comes out, whenever it comes to the field um, and the microphone's use in the field and the type of condenser that we use. It's about as basic as I can get. Apologies, I can't go into too much details on that one. Yeah, unless, right. and unless you have a little bit more info. Sure, I can share a little bit. So, I mean, uh, typically there's there's a whole bunch of different condenser types on the yeah. market, you know, true condensers. And a typical condenser requires like a bias or sometimes a backplate and a, a difference in, in voltage, a, a differential, if you will. So a pre-polarized condenser, meaning that it uses some kind of material that already has some polarization to it. There's many different ways of doing it. I'm sure we have many different ways to cure, but a lot of times, you know, it's some sort of material that's been magnetized uh, when it's like in flux. And then when it solidifies again it retains that charge so it does not require any uh you know additional electricity uh, to polarize the plate at least it may need electricity for other things like you know boosting up the, the preamp or the, the the level or the signal but in all essence that microphone is always going to be charged in some way and you won't have to apply external voltage to make it charged um, also sometimes referred to as an electric microphone as well awesome all right just learned something new there myself. <laughs> Next question. Uh, I assume the cardioid pattern of the uniplex is directional from the end of the capsule, excuse me, the capsule, not the side where the port's holes are, correct? That's correct. Um, this, uh, when it comes to the uniplex, it's technically an end address. Uh, one of the things you can't really see in the photos um, is the grill uh, at the top of the microphone. So basically, uh, anywhere that you have the top uh, pointed, basically of the microphone, the rejection comes from behind that microphone. Yeah, from that behind, basically behind the microphone through the ports, yeah. Great. Um, so would the DH5 be a good microphone for a fitness application? I understand it's omnidirectional versus cardioid like the SM31FH. Would there be a cardioid version that is in the works? Um, with the DH5, when it comes to its sweat resistance, it's made primarily per, for performance. That omnidirectional pattern, um, if you wanted to use it in a use case uh, for fitness, it might be able to work, but it usually in those environments, you're going to have music and you're going to have a lot of external sound and noise. You're also going to have a lot of movement. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that uh, in that use case. We do have the SM31FH, which is a one centimeter fitness headset that is made for that application. Great. All right. And next question. Um, why is XLR not listed under all the options that we have for TA4F? Is there anything different? Sorry, what, what was that question again? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Well, 
Well, go go ahead, Ben, and if you have oh, an so the question, the question I was, uh, if I understand it correctly, is about why is XLR not listed under any of the uh, the variants of our Plex series labs? And basically, when uh, you get the XLR variant or the XLR, we, we include include the preamp, like the RPM uh, the yeah. 400. Uh, so basically, it is the TA4F uh, connector, and then there's a little uh, preamp that takes your XLR and that plugs into the TA4F. You light it up with 48 volts from the desk or your source, and then that powers. Uh, the microphone and makes everything work. So when you get the XLR variant, you basically get both the XLR ready version and you can use it in any Sure or TA4F compatible transmitter pack as well. All right. Uh, next question, and this was from the demo, so I don't know if any of us can directly answer it right off the bat, um, but during Jack's uh, uh, examples and demo, uh, do you know what the what was being used for the first example with the poor gain before feedback? Was the was that the WL185, or do we know what that was? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. To be honest, I I, I I didn't catch that either. Um, apologies for that, uh, Ben, unless you may have an answer. I, I I can't say for certain what it was. It was an omnidirectional of some kind. I think Jack yeah. was showing omni versus uh, cardioid mostly in, in the difference between game before feedback. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was more, not so much about a model, but more just the differences that you have with, with game before feedback on omni versus directional. I think you're right there. All right, great. Uh, next question. Uh, what body packs can be used with the UL4 microphone? Uh, pretty much any current Sure body pack. Uh, what we do with our development is obviously for mics for wireless, we want to make sure that we have compatibility, uh, especially for uh, any of our microphones in the Plex series. So any current Sure body pack um, with a, a TA4F or Limo termination, we have compatibility uh, with UL4. Awesome. Next question, what would you recommend for a past pastor that likes clip-on lavaliers? Wondering if an Omni would be better in case he turns his head a lot. Um, that is definitely an, an option. Um, so one of the things that uh, that we showed, at least in the in the slide, when it comes to our applications, um, uh, cardioid is is obviously a directional pattern that you know you want to use in field if you really want that isolation. However, if you have uh, a situation with a pastor um, where you want to use an omnidirectional duraplex and twinplex can uh, usually fulfill those needs, you have to really think about uh, your sound reinforcement. Um, and whenever it comes to head movement, obviously, uh, when it comes to the widest bandwidth, Twinplex is going to handle that primarily in the best uh, context. Uh, Duraplex follows pretty much as a runner up because of the, uh, it being an omnidirectional pattern. And then um, when it comes to the directionality of the UL4, there is still some give with it. Obviously, it's going to be more directional. Um, one of the things that uh, really helps with that comes down to also that tie clip that we include. Um, that tie clip is rotatable by 360 degrees. So um, if you're noticing, you know, the pastor moving in a specific direction or you can want to get into a specific placement, uh, there is detailed variability in how you point the microphone towards the speaker as well. That can mitigate some of that. Um, but overall, any of the microphones can really work in a speech application setting, um, Duraplex, Twinplex, and Uniplex. Um, uh, with the omnidirectionals, you know, helping with some of that movement. But UL4 does have pretty wide bandwidth, but it is, you know, a cardioid pattern to a degree. So uh, if uh, you wanted to use the omnidirectional, that's definitely within free reign. It's really about uh, your sound reinforcement uh, when it comes to that. All right. Next question here. I'm currently using the CVL lavalier mic that came with my BLX system mm -hmm. for sound reinforcement and a sound source for our live stream. I've been getting a lot of feedback. Seeing how the Uniplex UL4 costs as much as an entire BLX system, would this mic help? Uh, it would be a significant improvement um, with its directionality and its response and durability. I can definitely say that. CVL is a great lavalier when it comes to any sort of entry level systems. If you're experiencing feedback and you're wondering that a you know, uh, higher tier microphone uh, cardioid pattern would work or uh, perform a little bit better, then I can, yeah, most likely, definitely. Fantastic. Um, I might also suggest to that person, um, you might want to reach out to our application support team. Um, they might be able to help you troubleshoot your existing uh, your existing um, lavalier and see if maybe there's something else that can be done to help with that game before feedback. Just, you know, before you spend a bunch of money. Um, I mean, we obviously want you to buy our products, but we want our products to work well for you. Um, so if you go to shore.com slash contact, 
you can up and open up a ticket with that application support team. Um, just troubleshoot it out with them. You know, they might be able to help. They might tell you, no, you probably need another lavalier. Um, but just open up a ticket, sure.com slash contact, um, and they can certainly help you out. It's a great team of applications and engineers over there. So, okay. Uh, next question, um, are any of the speakers today on a LAV? And I'll start and say no, I'm, you can see it kind of right here. I'm using an MV7. I think Ben and Mike are also using something similar today. Guilty is charged, uh, MV7 right here. It's just, uh, I mean, I have access to whatever. It's just super easy. You plug it in and uh, it sounds great. So. Likewise, running MV7 with, uh, I believe, far mode uh, auto level voicing. So, Me too, far mode um, auto level. Yeah. They're really great I for mean, calls. Listen, we love our we love our uh, we love our lavaliers here, but then you got to have additional interfaces and whatnot. And the MV7 is a direct USB microphone that you can plug right in. So sometimes even it's sure what's easiest is best. Okay. All right, great. Um, and then just one other question here about cost and pricing. Oh yeah, uh, UL4 and uh, DL4 with Duraplex, they're at the same price points. They're at 299 for the TA4F. They're at, uh, three, and this is all map pricing, 299 map pricing, TA4F, uh, 319 for the Limo variant, and then uh, 349 for that XLR variant, which I have to say is a, a pretty good deal uh, considering the, uh, you know, the cost of the RPM 400. Um, so you would basically get a black TA4F termination plus the RPM 400 at 349. So 299 uh, TA4F, uh, 319 Limo, and 349 XLR. All right, great. And if you're not located in the U.S. and you want local pricing, uh, you can just reach out to a local Sure authorized dealer. Um, if you visit Sure.com, you, you can find all of the dealers in your area and they can give you pricing and available availability where you are. Um, we have a follow up question to uh, what law are we using? And that's why aren't we using a law? <laughs> <laughs> Primarily use case. Every use case has specification. Exactly. It's, really just, it's just easier and uh, less setup time, um, as Cheryl mentioned. It's just it plugs one thing in and I turn it on and it's it's good to go. Um, more controllable. Yeah. Set it and forget yeah, it. As you, as you can see, we're all coming to you from our homes today. Um, so, you know, maybe if we were in the office, we'd get fancy with our setups. But, you know, it's all it's all about use case. And there are certainly in streaming applications, you know, we talked, there was someone earlier that was talking about using a lav with the BLX for a streaming situation. You know, if we were streaming and we wanted that low profile design or we wanted that closer mic or we were moving around in the stream in our space showing you something, um, that would certainly be a, a reason to jump to a lav. It's just every use case has its own unique circumstances and you choose what's best for what you need within your budget. And fortunately, Sure has a lot of options across the board for most of those, if not all of those. So um, yeah, that's just kind of where we are. All right, next question. Uh, there's a follow-up. Of course, the SM7B is hard to beat, hard to beat. And that's true. And the MV7 is the SM7B's uh, little sibling. So um, great, let's see. <laughs> uh, Next question here, WL93 has been my go-to for head-worn and theater and TV studios for probably 20 years. Price mm -hmm. point for these is considerably higher. Is it worth it for a college environment? Um, if, if you like the WL93 and it's working for you, that's great. Uh, if you want to have a, a little bit of a better specification and response, UL4 does use you know very current technology when it comes to its response and cartridge. <laughs> Um, so you will get a little bit more detail out of that microphone. Um, in, in addition to that, uh, when it comes to the Plex cables, durability and added value to the microphone overall, if you're having any experiences of failures in field or something along those lines with the cable or you want something that's a little bit more robust, um, that added v value with the, the UL4 is definitely a, a jump. Um, and it, it, it is an advancement in tier. And that's not saying anything about that 93, but um, I'm always a big believer of, uh, you know, if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But also at the same time, if you are looking and upgrading, you have some microphones that are getting long in the tooth. Um, UL4 is definitely a, a, a really wonderful offering and it has um, a lot of uh, input when it comes to its durability response and off axis rejection. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, the cable story as well. Just, I mean, if you, you need a little bit of quieter cable, something a little bit more robust and durable, the Plex cable is just phenomenal. You gotta, yeah. you gotta try it to really believe how 
quiet it is when you run your hands on it and coil it up. And it's it's like an, unlike any other, it's hard to get excited about a cable, but it's like an, unlike any other cable on the market you've ever played with. It's pretty cool. With lavaliers, the cable is such, it's an integral part as much as the microphone itself, because you really need that durability because they get coiled up and they get thrown in a lot of different scenarios. As a lot of, you know, probably our guests know. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that just about wraps up our questions. Um, if you do have any other questions uh, that pop into your head or anything else that you need some help with uh, uh, when it comes to audio, um, as I mentioned, you can open up a ticket with our application support team at sure.com slash contact. Once again, that's sure.com slash contact. And this webinar will be available for on-demand viewing in about a week or so at sure.com slash webinar. Thank you so very much for joining us today. We hope you learned a little something. Um, and I want to thank Ben and Mike for all of their expert expertise in today's session and answering all the questions. And uh, we thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you on the next one. Have a great week, everybody.